my name is Marie Allen. Uh, I'm a professor in forensic genetics at Uppsala University in Sweden. Uh, I work mainly with the forensic research. We work quite a lot with trying to uh, <clears throat> to enhance the methods and technologies that we are using for degraded samples. So samples that are very old or contain very small amounts of DNA. They started to work on DNA analysis and then they found that they didn't have any reference material, no living uh, relatives of Copernicus that they could find in Poland. Uh, so to make a long story short, uh, they ended up uh, searching for reference material in Sweden because we have a lot of books that was owned by Copernicus. And this is a war booty. We've had it in Sweden since 1626. Um, uh, it's uh, his own books from his own library, so we assume that he used these books for many, many years. We were involved in doing mitochondrial DNA analysis because the hairs that we found in Copernicus' book, uh, or one of the books, uh, was shed hairs, and then they normally contain very few uh, cells or copies of DNA. Um, in this case, they were very old, so even um, less DNA uh, to assume. And we, um, we did the mitochondrial DNA analysis sequencing, Sanger sequencing. Um, we could get uh, profiles out of four of nine hairs. Um, so these four uh, samples that gave profile, um, two were two different profiles that did not match match the remains uh, and two matched the remains. So we had two hairs that finally matched the remains that were found in Frombark in Poland. In addition to, to uh, the mitochondrial DNA analysis that we did of hairs and also uh, of the remains, uh, we've done STR analysis, um, YSTR, uh, and also some SNP typing, and this has been done together with the colleagues in, uh, in Poland. Um, we have looked at the marker for eye color, and we have seen that he most likely had light uh, eye color. Um, for the future, we would like to look at more SMPs. Uh, we do have a bit of a sample left from Copernicus, and we would like to see if we can um, look at other markers for phenotype, for BMI, for length, for facial features, and so on. We have done some uh, other historical cases previously. We have worked on uh, the remains or identification of the remains of Karin Göring, who was um, the wife of Hermann Göring, the Nazi leader Hitler's closest man. Uh, so we worked on that. We could identify these remains. We compared to a relative of um, Karin and uh, these remains could be reburied in, in Sweden again. They were taken from Germany. Um, and we've also worked on, on uh, another historical case or story. Uh, it, it's the identification of St. Bridget or St. Birgitta of Sweden. So we had two skulls in, uh, in mid-Sweden in an abbey and these were said to belong to St. Bridget and her daughter Katarina. And again, we did mitochondrial DNA analysis. Uh, we could see that they did not share mitochondrial DNA, meaning that they are not maternally related because everyone inherits the same mitochondrial DNA as uh, the mother. So we could say that it's not mother and daughter, but we could also say that it's more than 200 years apart between these two skulls because we we did the carbon-14 dating, um, so with that uh, <clears throat> at hand or the, that data, we could say that none of these two skulls are authentic, um, which of cor course is not what we wish to, <laughs> to hear or see, but that was the result.